I also tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. Dear God, just like Peter, we tell you today that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We believe in you, and we know that you are the only way to the Father. Thank you for building your church and calling us to you. We will never stop believing in who you are and all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying with us today. The Kids Bible in a Year podcast is sponsored by Little Passports, delivering monthly activity kit subscriptions that help kids explore the world. Cultivate curiosity and discover new interests with hands-on crafts and activities in cooking, science, crafts, and more, all with a unique cultural twist. Visit littlepassports.com slash blessed to learn more and save 20% with code blessed. A beautiful transformation. In our last story, Jesus healed a man who was blind from birth and was asked if he wanted to know the Messiah. The man said yes, and Jesus revealed himself to him, and he worshipped Jesus. Here, we will learn the story about how Jesus reveals his Messiahship to some of his disciples and transfigures before them, as inspired by the Gospels. Hi, it's Julianne Thompson, guest hosting for Julia Jeffress Sadler here. Thanks for joining me for the Kids Bible in a Year podcast. Peter, James, and John are about to see something incredible. They'll never forget it. You want a hint? They might need some sunglasses. Let's see what Jesus has to tell us today. As they came to Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked the disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They answered, John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or some of the prophets. What do you think? Jesus asked. Peter said, You are the Messiah. Jesus said, Peter, you are blessed because this was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. I will build my church on this rock, and the enemy will not overcome it. Then Jesus told the disciples to not tell anyone that he was the Messiah. A short time later, Jesus, Peter, James, and John went up a mountain. Jesus began to transfigure, change in form, before the three of them. All of a sudden, Jesus' face began to shine, and he became very bright like the sun. Then, Next to Jesus, Moses and Elijah appeared. They were standing and talking there with Jesus. The three of them were talking about Jesus and what was going to take place. They were mentioning how he was going to bring fulfillment in Jerusalem. The disciples were half asleep when this was taking place, but woke up right away when they realized what was going on. Peter said, Lord, if you want me to, I can put up a shelter for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was talking, a bright cloud came over and covered them. They heard a voice say to them, This is my son, whom I love and am pleased with. Listen to him. After hearing this, the disciples fell on their face and were very scared. But Jesus said to them, Stand up. Do not be afraid. When they stood up, only Jesus was standing before them. Elijah and Moses were no longer standing next to Jesus. As they left, Jesus told them not to tell anyone what had just happened until he was raised from the dead. They were confused as to what he meant when he said he would rise from the dead. The disciples asked, Why do teachers of the law say that Elijah has to come first? He said, Elijah came and restored, and they did not recognize him. But they still did to him whatever they wanted to. The Son of Man will also suffer at their hands. 
the disciples knew that Jesus was talking about John the Baptist. When they got to the bottom of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. The people were arguing with the teachers of the law. As soon as they saw Jesus, they all ran to him. Why are you arguing? Jesus asked. A man came to Jesus with his demon-possessed son. He said to Jesus, The demon will not let him speak. It makes him foam at the mouth and become very stiff. None of your disciples were able to make the demon leave my son. Jesus replied, Why do none of you believe? Bring the boy to me. When the boy came near Jesus, he started to roll around on the ground and foam at the mouth. Jesus asked how long he had been like this. The man answered, Since he was a little child, it has made him throw himself into fire or water trying to kill him. Please help us if you can. Jesus said, If you believe, then it can be possible. The man believed, and Jesus made the spirit come out of the boy. Jesus could see that the crowd was running over to see what was happening. He commanded the demon to never enter the boy again. The demon left the boy, and the boy looked like he was dead. But Jesus took his hand and lifted him up. Jesus left and went inside a house. The disciples later asked Jesus, Why were we not able to cast the demon out of the boy? Jesus said, This is something that can only come from prayer. What would it take for people to simply believe that Jesus was who he said he was? Jesus asked his friends a question as our story opens today. I think it's interesting that he wanted to hear the thoughts of his closest friends and followers. He knew that others thought he might be John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or someone else. But who do you think I am? He asked them. It's a question we have to answer every day too. Who is Jesus to you? Is he in charge of your life? Is he your friend, your father? Is he just someone who lived a long time ago? Is he the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords? The way we live shows others what we think of Jesus when we choose to follow him and love others the way he did. It shows that we believe in who he is and what he says. Okay, back to the disciples. These were his friends, his family, and he cared deeply what they thought. He wanted to hear from them. And as usual, Peter spoke first. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the one we've been waiting for, the Son of God. This was such a big moment in the ministry of Jesus. In fact, it was the very beginning of the church. Not the kind of church you might be thinking of. A building where we worship on Sundays. No, this was the beginning of the church. The people of God who believe in Jesus and trust in Him. This was actually the first time the word church was used in the Bible. It comes from a Greek word, ecclesia, which means called out ones. Jesus was looking ahead to all of his followers who would one day believe in him and make up his church. He was telling them what was to come and showing Peter that his answer to the big question was more important than we could ever know. Jesus then said that God the Father had shown this to Peter and that he would build his church upon this truth and this moment. Then he made a promise. It's a promise you and I can hold on to every day as we live in this crazy world. He said that our biggest enemy, Satan, would never win against his church. Death, darkness, and sin would be defeated for good. He promised to protect us in the end. He promised that his church would live on forever. Jesus then took his three closest friends up on top of a mountain. The Bible tells us that he began to transform. Something was happening to him. His face was shining like the sun and his clothes were very bright and white. Have you ever tried to stare into the sun? 
you can't do it. It's too bright. That's what happened to the face of Jesus. He was reflecting the glory of God. And just when these three men thought they had seen it all, there were Moses and Elijah standing next to Jesus. But hold on. They had been dead for years and years and years. Was this real? Some believe these two men were there because Jesus was making everything from the Old Testament come true. Moses represented the law and Elijah represented the prophets. Do you remember hearing all the stories of the Old Testament? The law was there to show us that we couldn't be perfect and we needed someone to be perfect for us and save us. The prophets were there to point the way to Jesus and tell us that he was coming. And here he was. When Peter, James, and John heard the loud voice of God telling them that Jesus was his son, they got so scared that they fell down. Jesus, as he often did, told them not to be afraid. And just like that, he was back to his normal self, standing alone on the mountain. They came down only to once again find people waiting on Jesus. He took care of a young boy and told his followers again that they just needed more faith. It wouldn't be long now. God's great plan was about to come true. Thanks for being here. Have you ever wondered what makes you great? I hope you'll join me again next time to hear what Jesus has to say about that. Okay, you know what to say. The Bible is the best story ever told. It's God's story to you, and it's all true. Found joy in our podcast? Help others discover us by writing a review and let's spread positivity far and wide. Thanks for listening to Pray.com Kids Bible in a Year. For more inspiring stories and wisdom to last a lifetime, download the Pray.com app for free today. Thanks for listening to Kids Bible in a Year. I want to invite our adult listeners to check out my other show, Unapologetic, God's Truth on Today's Topics. It's unfiltered, important, inspiring, and we have awesome conversations and amazing guests such as Candace Cameron Bray, Vice President Mike Pence, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Shannon Bream, Maddie Pruitt, and so many others. We are helping you have conversations that empower you to have bold faith in a broken world. You'll be excited, inspired, and encouraged in your faith as you check out Unapologetic. Remember that you can tune in wherever you get your podcasts and on Pray.com.